Well, today it's a sweltering hot day, 113 degrees in the beginning of September, but I'm here in my garage working on my air compressor. This compressor is about 20 years old and it needed to have parts of the head rebuilt and needed to, needed to be cleaned up. One of the valve plates was jammed up and uh, one of the cylinders was scored pretty badly so it wasn't working. <clears throat> so I took it apart and, and I'm, now I'm ready to put it back together. So I thought, before I do that, I'll show you guys how it works. So our compressors are quite interesting, actually. And I think a lot of people probably don't really understand how they work. Now, there's various kinds of air compressors. The big commercial industrial ones are almost always going to be some kind of a rotary um, design. This is a reciprocating type, and this is what most smaller compressors are. So they actually have pistons, very similar to your car. So let's take a look at how this thing, um, at the different parts of what's inside the crankcase and everything, and hopefully this will help you understand how they work. So this is a single stage compressor, but it is a four cylinder. So it might be a bit confusing because there's actually two um, sets of cylinder banks. So this is a four cylinder, but it's only a single stage. If they are um, dual stage, one side might compress the air initially, then it goes to the other side to get compressed again. So the key parts of an air compressor really are the motor. So this just provides power for the, the crankshaft. And um, the, the motors are, are pretty basic. There is a flywheel here because we do have a crankshaft. So this flywheel goes around and it provides cooling. This one is air cooled. It provides cooling for the crankcase and it provides momentum to get over the um, the short spot in the in the crank. So in here you can see the crankcase. It, it's the shiny part right down there. There's a weight here. There's a similar one on the other side. And so this is the one half of the compressor. So you've got the connecting rods here. Um, I had to install new ones because I broke these when I was tearing this side apart. So this side is completely put together and I need to put this side back together so let's look at this we've got um, we've got oil in the bottom here even smaller compressors are going to have some type of small oil reservoir and the larger ones you do need to maintain the oil much like you would your car so once the motor is spinning around and the crank is turning in there the pistons are going up and down inside here they're just reciprocating back and forth here is the air intake and there's a little air filter in there and so the air can come into the cylinder head here now here's the old one that uh, basically failed so here you can see this is where the air would come out on this side is the inlet this is where the air comes in so let's pull this apart this is a, nothing more than um, just a, a box to divide the air and so <clears throat> this here's the inlet air comes in into this chamber and then it goes through the valves, I'll show you. And then it comes out here and goes out here to the receiver. So we'll set that aside. I don't care if that gets dirty because it's already ruined. Okay, so now the valve plate is upside down right now. So this part mates up with the cylinder head and there's little reed valves in here. They're just simple pieces of metal like this that sit in there and they flap up and down as those cylinders go up and down. So the air gets drawn in through the reeds on one side and pushed back out as compressed air through the reeds on the other side. And so there you can see this is where the top of the cylinders are going to be. They'll draw it in the one side and then push it back out on the other. So because these reeds are on opposite sides, that's why that works. So as the air is coming in, one reed is going to be sucked down, actually this one, and sealed off and this one is going to open up. So the air will get pulled in here and pushed out here. I think that's correct. <laughs> so here are the, the pistons. This is just a round, this is the cylinder. It's just a round opening in this piece of cast iron. That's it. And then here's the cylinder and the connecting rods, um, like the ones I just showed you on the compressor, connect here onto that cylinder. So this broke when I was trying to get it apart because this this piston is actually, there's some corrosion in there and it's jammed in there completely tight so it's locked up. 
So that's why this one failed. Um, this is a fairly large compressor. If you know anything about compressors, you'll recognize 18 CFM at 90 PSI. That's a pretty serious machine. So I need this to run air powered sanders and things like that. So that's how it works. Just a quick review. Draw the air in here through the valve plate that's right here. The pistons are reciprocating back and forth. The crankshaft here is what drives those pistons up and down. And then the compressed air comes out of here. And in this case, we have a receiver tank, and that's the big tank here. So that just is a reservoir to hold the compressed air. Um, and and it'll, it allows the compressor actually to, to run for a period of time, compress the air, and then we use the air. And as that pressure drops, we'll have a switch on the side here. It's right there. Um, that switch is going to turn the compressor back on saying that we need more air. So that's really how they work. This is a fairly large one, but for the, uh, the more common ones that you see, this is basically how all of them work. They're going to have a motor. Um, they're going to have some kind of a reciprocating piston that compresses the air. So there you go. Now you know how an air, air compressor works. So hopefully this, uh, this has been entertaining. Saving Miller out.